We are live. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, ever merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all, our dear viewers. May I start by apologizing for the technical hitch which has led to our 20 minute delay in um, starting broadcast today. As per our tradition, we shall start by um, calling on our brother Yashur Khan Sahib to read the Tlawat and give the English translation. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ قال إبراهيم رب اجعل هذا بلدا آمنا وارزق أهله من الثمرات أهله من الثمرات من آمن منهم بالله واليوم الآخر قال ومن كفر فأمتعه قليلا ثم عزتره إلى عذاب النار وبئس المصير وإذ يرفع إبراهيم القوائد من البيت وإسماعيل ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم إن أول بيت وزع للناس للذي ببكة مباركا وهدى للعالمين فيه آيات بينات مقام إبراهيم ومن دخله كان آمنا ولله على الناس هج البيت من استطاع إليه سبيلا ومن كفر فإن الله غني عن العالمين وأزن في الناس بالحج يأتوك رجالا وعلى كل زامر يأتين يأتين من كل فج عميق In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful. The verses I've recited are from three different sections of the Holy Quran. First from chapter 2, verses 127 to 128. And remember when Abraham said, My Lord, make this a town of peace and provide with fruits such of its dwellers as believe in Allah and the last day. He said, And on, to he, and on him to who believes not will I bestow benefits for a little while, then will I drive him to the punishment of the fire, and an evil destination it is. And remember the time when Abraham and Ishmael raised the foundations of the house, praying, Our Lord, accept this from us, for thou art the all-hearing, the all-knowing. From chapter 3, verse 97 to 98, Surely the first house founded for mankind is that at Becca abounding in blessings and a guidance for all peoples. In it are manifest signs. It is the place of Abraham and whoso enters it enters peace. And pilgrimage to the house is a duty which men, those who can find a way, owe to Allah. 
And whoever disbelieves, let him remember that Allah is surely independent of all creatures. And chapter 2, verse 28, And proclaim unto mankind the pilgrimage, they will come to thee on foot and on every lean camel, coming by every distant track. Jazakallah. Jazakallah. Yaki Sahib, that was uh, very good, especially as all of the verses you recited are pertinent to tonight's lecture. Yeah, may Allah bless you. Um, tonight's lecture, of course, delivered by the UK Italian Department, is going to be presented by our brother Shahid Ahmed Khan, who is serving as the current Tarbiyat Secretary for Gillingham Jamaat. Mr. Khan has been serving the Jamaat in Gillingham since 1964, when the Jamaat was first um, created in Gillingham. And he has served under, on various capacities, including as Sadr of the Jamaat and also Zayim Ansarullah. May I call Mr. Khan to deliver his lecture on my experience of Umrah and my visit to Medina. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu. Bismillah rahman rahim If you can share these slides, uh, Kamal Sahib. I have been an avid follower of the weekly lectures organized by the Taim department over the last few years. In fact, I just saw that it was, this is going to be 199th lecture. So nearly two years of lectures. And the quality of the lectures and the wide variety of the subjects covered have been quite outstanding. So when I was asked, I was humbled by the uh, request to make a presentation this evening on my experience, experience of Umrah and Hajj, as, uh, on Umrah and my visit to Medina, which I undertook in March this year, just before Ramadan. I hope and pray that it will meet the high standards set by the Italian department and any shortcomings and omissions will be overlooked. In addition to some background and history of some of the rites, that is the ceremonies of Umrah, I have tried to include some useful tips for those viewers who might be thinking of performing Hajj and Umrah in the near future. The verses recited by Yasahadi Khan Sahib from the Holy Quran were just a few which amplify the history of the Holy Kaaba, the sanctity of the city of Makkah, some prophecies relating to its security, and other to its gatherings of all sections of human society, and of course point to Hajj and Umrah. Next slide, please. Now, as mentioned, as the, one of the verses recited by Yasa was regard, chapter three, verse 98, in which Allah says, pilgrimage to the house of Allah is a duty which men, those who can find thither, owe to Allah. Next slide, please. Hajj, as we all know, is one of the five pillars of our faith. It is obligatory for every Muslim who is physically able, of sound mind, and financially capable to perform Hajj at least once in their lifetime. Now, Umrah can be performed at any time of the year, unlike Hajj which must be performed in the first 10 days of the month of Zul Hajj. But Umrah is not a substitute for Hajj. Whilst my presentation will con concentrate on my experience of Umrah and its rights, if we can go back slightly, uh, Kamal Sahib, whilst my presentation will concentrate on the experience of Umrah and its rights, and the essential ceremonies, some of his, these rites, such as Tawaf and Sa'i, for instance, are common to both Hajj and Umrah. Let me mention at the outset that Umrah is not a substitute for Hajj, although, of course, it is highly recommended. Umrah can be performed in a matter of two or three hours, whereas Hajj takes minimum of five days in addition to the traveling time. Ironically, in my case, this year marks exactly 50 years since I performed Hajj. Of course, much has changed in terms of the logistics and the magnitude of numbers and hence the overall experience. Coming to the logistics of getting to Makkah and Medina for Hajj and Umrah, 
Very recently, the Saudi government has introduced visitors visas on which Umrah can be performed. And these are obtained, the visa is obtained online and can be obtained within an hour. The cost of which was roughly 100 pounds, 40 pounds of which was the COVID medical cover, which, which might come down obviously with the restrictions being re re released. I was accompanied this time by my wife in this journey this time, and we took the, the preferred route for visiting Medina before proceeding to perform Umrah. I say this is a preferred route because immigration generally, the, line, the queues at the immigration in Medina are much shorter, whereas in, Mecca, uh, in Jeddah, which is closer to Mecca, they tend to be a lot, lot, lot longer. On the flight from London to Medina, where Jeddah, we saw people in Ihram who were going directly for Umrah. Next slide, please. Now, Medina al Manavra is about 280 miles from Mecca and is known, the full name is Medina al Manavra. The reason I mentioned that is some of our viewers might well have seen the name Medina mentioned in some of the uh, Arab countries, signposted for roads saying Medina. Medina uh, means an Arabic city, but Medina al Manavra is actually the city of the Prophet in Medina in, in Saudi Arabia. And the, at present, the uh, it's called the enlightened city. That's the translation of Manavra. At the time of the Prophet, it was the city of the Prophet, and later after his demise, it became the Prophet's city. When we arrived in Medina, Azan was being called for Fajr prayers. We were in time for Fajr prayers, and it could be heard by loudspeaker throughout, or at least in the close proximity of the mosque, which is a grand mosque and it was faith inspiring. It was the first day for almost two years since social distances were being, was being discarded and the masjid was brimming with people who had been waiting for this day and to stand to next to each other. Next slide, please. Our hotel, which we had booked independently with the recommendations of some of our members who had performed Umrah recently, was on the perimeters of the Masjid Nabi. Now, this is of great benefit to be in the vicinity of the mosque as all the activities revolve around the sacred haram, that is the mosque, grand mosque, starting from the morning, the hajjah prayers are offered there, and then throughout the day, the five obligatory prayers to which people proceed to, to offer their prayers there. So you therefore have to be in close proximity to save time and effort to spend as much time as possible within the mosque. Now, due to COVID restrictions, there were two applications which we had to download on our telephones, smart telephones, to be able to apply for permits to perform Umrah and also to spend time for prayer in the Nawafil prayers in Jannatul, uh, in, in Riyazul Jannah. I'll come to that Riyazul Jannah later on. And there were different times for men and women allocated through this app. And one of the apps was regarding the vaccination status that gave us access. These access was, uh, sorry, these apps were very cumbersome and appeared that despite being so close to Makkah, we might not be able to obtain the required permit. However, eventually all such hoops were passed and successfully, which, which we had given us ample opportunities to beseech Allah's help. Next slide, please. Now, when we, on the perimeters of the mosque, you will see the one on the left is, uh, that's around the perimeters of the actual mosque. And then there are 42 gates uh, spread all around the mosque itself through which people uh, access the mosque. And on the next one, next uh, slide, you will note the mosque, the green iconic dome in the far corner near the mihrab is the chamber of Hazrat Aisha Radhiallahu Anha, and which also houses the grave of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam, along with Hazrat Abu Bakr Radhiallahu Anhu and Hazrat Umar Radhiallahu Anhu. Now, on the right, you will see uh, just about the, in front of the dome there is a further dome, in silver dome, from which the Imam at present leads the, the, the salat. The next slide, please. Now you'll see that 
underneath the dome, standing in front of the Blessed Rosa Rasul, facing the uh, three sections on the bottom right hand, you will note that three sections. Now, sometimes it is generally assumed that the Holy Prophet's tomb might be the one in the middle. But from the plan that we have on the left there, you will see it is the first chamber with the biggest inlet in the grill that you can see. And next to that is Hazrat Abu Bakr and all following on that from Hazrat Umar at the end, Razila Talano at the end. And people file across the front of this. And there's about a 30 meter gallery through which people, this is in front of the mosque. And the uh, after prayers, normally they are open for a certain time, a slot, there are slot times, and you can walk across and pay your salams and pray for the Prophet on these also for this, uh, the Khalafah as well. Next slide, please. The Riyaz al-Jannah, which I mentioned, for which the app had to give us permission this time, this hadn't been the case in the past, and I understand this might well have been lifted by now. It gives you access to Riyaz al-Jannah. This is just to the left of Rosa, looking at it, and it is a, an area of about 20 meters by 15 meters. And according to a hadith, this area known as Riyaz al-Jannah, in other words, Garden of Heaven, is the area sacred from the chamber of the Holy Prophet to Hazrat Aisha's chamber. Uh, to the mihrab on the right hand side, you can see sign posted there, is part of one of the gardens of Jannah, according to Bukhari. Now, separate timings were allocated for its openings for ladies and men section. And just similar to Bethu Dua in Kadian, there's a heavy demand, obviously, to pray in this part of the mosque. The yellow pillars that you see there mark the vertical pillars, mark the location on some of the blessed places where the Holy Prophet stood to deliver sermons, offer tahajjud prayers, and led prayers originally facing Bayt al in Jerusalem at the time. Next slide, please. Generally, much of the time in Medina is spent within the mosque. In addition to the five daily prayers, tahajjud obviously, now our prayers also said, also study of the Holy Quran, its memorization, and study of it takes place in the course of the day. In the middle there, you'll see these people are in the, co in the process of memorizing the Holy Quran, and you'll see people dotted around also listening to each other in, in the process of memorizing it. And the mosque itself is very ornate. If you see on the right-hand side, it's beautifully decorated, and it's a, uh, behold one's awe to see the, all that is around the surroundings. Next slide, please. Now, Jannatul Baqi is the, Jannat, is, is the cemetery just outside about 100 meters from the exit to the Rosa Rasul, to the gate at the front. And this, is a more, this was a cemetery, was a cemetery which, which in, has the burials, including those of Hazrat I, the Holy Prophet's close family, for instance, Hazrat Aisha, Hazrat Alanha, uh, the Holy Prophet's daughters, uh, also the Holy Prophet's son, infant son, Hazrat Ibrahim, and also of the third caliph, Hazrat Usman anhu, are also buried in this Jannatul Baqi. And as many as 10,000 companions of the Holy Prophet are also buried here. Now you will see the cemetery, the cemetery cemeteries opened after Fajr and Asr prayers for short periods. Uh, you will note from there that there are no headstones on the right hand side. If you see the graves to mark, uh, identifying the graves of which particular person is buried but just stone markers of the graves. Next slide, please. Now, whilst visiting Medina, pilgrims also make it a point to go around to visit some of the historical places in the proximity of Medina. For these, Yara taxis are available normally after Fajr and Asr prayers because these are the less hot part of the climb, uh, hot part of the day. And for around two, two and a half hours, costing around 15 to 20 pounds, you can hire a taxi and they'll be able to take you around on excursions, visiting various locations. The next slide will show Masjid Guba on the left-hand side. This was the first mosque built when the Prophet, Holy Prophet وسلم, migrated from Mecca and uh, came to settle in Medina at the time. 
This is about four miles from the Haram and as the crow flies. And with the road network, it takes a bit longer to get to it. And close to that is Masjid Qiblatan. Now, this is the mosque where the Holy Prophet was commanded to chain the Qibla from Masjid Aqsa in Jerusalem to the Holy Kaaba in Mecca, and therefore has two mihrabs in different directions. Next, they take you to the next slide, please, to the Battle of Ohad Plain. Now, this was with the second battle of uh, as, as the, the Holy Prophet وسلم, was fought. Uh, and, and in this plain, uh, marked on the right hand side are graveyards of, of 60 to 75 people uh, of the Muslims who martyred here, including the Holy Prophet's uncle, Hazrat Hamza. The Holy Prophet also had a tooth uh, lost in the battle, as well as having his cheek injured through the helmet that he was wearing. In the background, in the grill on the right hand side, you, you far and you can see Mount Ohad. And it is famous for the fact that uh, Khalid bin Walid at the time, a, a bitter enemy of the Muslims, inflicted heavy casualties as a result of Muslims abandoning their post, which the Holy Prophet had asked them to secure. They had left it prematurely, thinking that the, the enemy had been routed, which was a, a, gave them a heavy penalty to bear for not having followed the Holy Prophet's orders to the latter. A lesson for us all. Next one, please. The Battle of the Ditch of the Khandak. This is the third battle as well, one of the, third of the three major battles. The first one, Battle of Badr, was fought at a place called Badr, which is 100 miles north of Medina on the way to Jeddah. Now, in this battle of Khandak, on the plain of Khandak, they have various locations where the Holy Prophet prayed prior to the battle, and these are marked by small mosques dotted around this area. Two records of nafal are, prayer, are offered generally, as you see people in the middle one offering nafal. And on the right hand side, you see the mosque Hazrat Salman Farsi, Razir Atala's Anhu's uh, mosque, who was a Sahabi, the companion who suggested the idea of the trench, the ditch being dug around Medina to defend against the aggressors. Now that completes the visit to Medina. And this obviously is not part of the Umrah. Uh, next, we go on to the next slide, please. Now, following our four days stays in Medina, four days stay in Medina, we are ready to proceed to Makkah. And for this, we had booked a passage by a relatively new bullet train on online from UK before we left, called the Harmain Express. Harmain is a connection between the two harams. In other words, the plural of haram, haram. And the one way uh, fare for this was 35 pounds. And uh, it, I was, felt it was underused, but I understand that during Hajj time, this is a very quick mean of travel. Next. Now let us, with regard to the motive for Hajj and Umrah, when Muslims intend to perform Hajj, they often re are reminded that the opportunity pilgrimage is actually an invitation from Allah, our creator, to his house, the Holy Kaaba. Supporting the spirit of brotherhood, unity, equality, the sacred event of Hajj brings together Muslims from all over the world. It is said that the, whoever performs Hajj with a pure heart returns home free from lifelong sins. And apart from symbolizing positivity and kindness, Hajj being a reenactment of the obedience and sacrifice of Hazrat Ibrahim wasalam, to Allah is the highest form of honor earned by a Muslim. Next slide, please. This is the bullet train I mentioned, and I couldn't help the fact that this was also a fulfillment of the prophecy as mentioned in the Holy Quran, Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse 9. And he has created horses and mules and asses that you may ride them and as a source of duty. And he will create what you do not know yet. With regard to this verse, the Hazrat Muslim Aud Talanhu, in his commentary of this, mentioned that already the, the prophecy has already been fulfilled in the form of railways, trains, uh, railway trains, steamships, motor cars, etc. And in fact, he mentioned that God alone knows what new means of transport is yet to be invented. So here we were actually witnessing something 
fulfillment of a prophecy in the very land where the Holy Quran was revealed. The train itself took two and a quarter hours and a 280 mile journey. And from the station in Medina or in Mecca, there's also a shuttle service that takes you to the Haram. And we were luckily very close once again, once we arrived in, Medina, in Mecca, the hotel that was in pro close proximity of the Haram. We thanked Allah that despite our many shortcomings, he had through his sheer mercy and granted us this opportunity to pre present ourselves at his house and had removed all the hindrances along the way. Now, our act, the application that I mentioned at the beginning on our phone, it became, it was showing it, it was active and our slot of 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. was now something we could enter. I'm not sure how much of the security guards actually saw that, but this was a requirement at the time. Next, please. At the time of donning the ihram, these are two sheets of uh, clothing. Um, in Medina, when before we left, we had won, donned our own uh, ihrams at the time. Uh, the talbiyah was also called after performing our uh, no, no afil prayer to do the no, no afil prayer for the intention of Umrah. Uh, and the talbiyah, the wording of which is labbaik Allahumma labbaik la sharika la labbaik inna alhamda wa nimata la kabal mulk la sharika la. Here I am, O oh Allah, here I am, here I am. Thou hast no associate, here I am. All praise and bounty are thine and thine the kingdom. So this had greater meaning once you entered the haram that here we were present in on Allah's invitation. The feeling on entry to haram oh, one leaves us emotionally dumb and feeling each time you notice it is undescribable. One has to pinch oneself that you're not just passing through a dream. Next, please. The main rituals for Umrah are firstly Tawaf. Now, Tawaf is uh, uh, going around this uh, Holy Kaaba seven times. When you enter the Haram, you, the starting point is the Hajar Aswad, as you see there on the left hand side, encased now in uh, silver sheeting. And uh, you start, that is the starting point. And this uh, is also mentioned, or you can actually see the green light, which actually identifies that is a corner. And on, when you go around the each circuit, there are recommended du'as, prayers for, uh, from, uh, at, from the start onwards for each circuit. And when you reach this uh, corner before the hajjahs, at the end, uh, the, called the Yemeni corner, the du'a to be recited is Rabbana atina fid dunya hasanatam fil akhirati hasanatam wa kina azab al-nar wa adkhil wal jannatam ala barar ya aziz wa ya ghaffar ya rabbul alameen Lord grant us the good of this world and the good in the hereafter and deliver us from the torment of the fire and admit us to paradise with the righteous, O mighty, most forgiving Lord of the worlds. At the completion of each circuit before you start the next one, you raise your hands uh, towards the Kaaba and kiss it, kiss your hands and go forward. The time taken for each circuit of the Kaaba depends as to how many people are in the pyramid, in the courtyard. And at times during, especially during Hajj, the Tawaf also takes place around the circuit at the top on the first floor. You can see it on the right hand side, the golden structure that is the gallery for the first round of the upper story. And that one circuit of that was two kilometers long, we found out. Having completed the two of the seven circuits, then the two rakats of uh, are offered at the Mukam Ibrahim, and this is the close to that because people are circling the Kaaba. So in that area, you have to say two nawafil. Next one, please. The next ceremony is the drinking. This one just identifies where the sahi, which is the building, is the Safa Marwa on the right hand side, is within the structure of the Haram now, and this just identifies where it is. The next one, as I said, after having completed the tuaf, uh, the next uh, is just regarding, is to do with zamzam. Here again, you have to uh, drink some zamzam. This, the containers of the zamzam are available throughout the Masjid Haram, and the same are also available in Masjid Nabi as well. Next slide, please. There, there are people following me that. And uh, after that, 
you then proceed to Sai. Sai is the going from the hillocks of Safa and Marwa from one place to the other. Next slide, please. The distance from Safa, uh, when you start uh, from, you start, say, from the hillock of Safa on the left there, it is now encased in, uh, the, in the actual hill or the hillock is no more there. It's just the original uh, part of it is there. And here you start your, uh, say, going from, uh, from Safa to Marwa, a distance of 450 meters one way. So you're in, in, all, in total, you're covering 300, uh, th three kilometers in all. This commemorates the action of Hazrat Azra, wife of the Hazrat Ibrahim, who, who, who searched frantically between these hillocks, searching for, her, for water for her son, Hazrat Ismail, when the well Zamzam sprang up. There are two green lights also shown there, this 50 meters apart, where the men have to jog, whereas women have to continue in the normal uh, pace. And this symbolizes that the higher ground of the hillock, in other words, you are going to frantically looking for water, so-called symbol, the symbol symbolic of that. At the start, you, as I said, you mentioned you pray towards uh, facing towards the Kaaba and the Quranic verse, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the Safa wal Marwa tamin shahirillahi, Safa and Marwa are among the signs of Allah. And then you go seven times and you finish at the end in at Marwa. The only act that remains after this to complete Umrah is to have a shave of your head or trimming of your hair. You will note that there are people there waiting to cut your hair for a small fee in the past, uh, just before you leave Haram. Women only have to have a few centimeters of the hair cut. And after that, once you have had your shave of the head or at a haircut, you are allowed then to take off your ihram. There is a sense of great relief at the intensity of the experience. And one prays that Allah accepts our umrah to come recipients of the rewards that he has promised both in this world and the hereafter. That completes the umrah and further umrah can be performed for which you have to go outside to Mikat boundary. Masjid Aisha is used, which is about uh, half an hour away by taxi. And you start the process on the same manner again. And just at the end, I would like to mention, next uh, slide, please. And also there are ziyarat in, uh, this just identified the whole host of nations that are in, 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 a, in attendance during Hajj and obviously during Umrah as well. They come from all over the world, just as the Quranic verses mentioned this. Uh, just finally, there are some places. Next, uh, please. There are some locations where, which people visit when they're offering or performing Umrah or when they're visiting Makkah. Now, these are locations that are not part of Umrah, uh, but people tend to go to see these uh, to witness for themselves. The one in the middle there is Jabal Rahmat, where the uh, pilgrims on the day of Arafat spend the day, full day there, and they try to go to the top. And this is the mount where the Holy Prophet وسلم, delivered his final sermon. There are staircases on the on the left, as you can see, you can walk up and identifying on the right hand side the uh, parameters of uh, Arafat. Uh, next one is just shows that the two historical uh, caves. Once you go to the next one, please. Uh, these are the two historical caves, the one on the left and middle are the, uh, the cave of where the Holy Prophet first used to go for meditation and had the revelation of the beginning of the Holy Quran in Surah Ikra. Uh, and this is about two hour, two, three hours journey up to the top and people do try to get up there. And the next to that is the passage to Thor, which is where the Holy Prophet وسلم, along with Hazrat Abu Bakr and Talano, they took refuge on the in, during migration to Medina. So that's for my final slide, which is it's for further reading on Hajj and Umrah, is, I, which I thoroughly recommend, is the booklet entitled Pilgrimage to the House of Allah by Hazrat Chawji Zafrullah Khan Sabrazilat in which he has given his personal accounts of performing the Hajj and Umrah. Although these experiences were from the point of his uh, being a royal guest of the late King Faisal of Saudi Arabia's time, 
His detailed accounts, I must say, were ins inspirational in me performing Hajj at the age of 20 years. In the end, may Allah enable me and all of us to learn the true meaning of Hajj and Umrah and to be able to fulfill our obligations to his satisfaction. Amin. Jazakumullah. Jazakumullah, so Khan Saab, that was quite detailed and inspiring. And um, I would like to, obviously, on, on my on my own behalf and, and, and the UK Italian Department, uh, we want to say a uh, very well thank you. Uh, may Allah bless you for this delivery. And I'll hand over to Shakil Sahib to conclude the session. Um, Jazakallah, Shahid Khan Sahib. Um, as uh, Kamaluddin Sahib said, uh, such a comprehensive lecture with the uh, images you shown about uh, about your personal experiences. I'm sure the viewers must have found them enlightening and inspiring um, on the whole experience you had. Uh, a lot of people have uh, just said, uh, mashallah, excellent accounts and praise your uh, the, 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 the whole experience. We don't uh, just at the end, we just like to thank the viewers for keep watching the program, the lectures on Monday Urdu lecture and on Tuesday English lectures. Um, as usual, they are every Monday is our Urdu lecture and on Tuesday the English lecture. If you have any suggestions and you'd like to give some feedback, please do not hesitate to contact us on the email of the Talim. Um, Talim email, which is on the screen, you will see um, Talim online, ahmdiyauk.org. Can I just request our guest to lead us in our silence prayer, please? Please join me in silent prayer. Amen. 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 Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.